So you want to know how to create a VBA form in Excel. In this video, I'll show you a quick cut to the chase way of building a form fast. What this form is going to do is it's going to enable you to click on a spreadsheet range and it'll display two key columns from within that data. It just demonstrates how to get a form together and I think you'll like it. And hey, if you do, please click like and subscribe. It encourages me to build more videos. Let's get to it now. So what we're going to do is we're going to demonstrate the form that I'm creating. So basically we got some data here and ignore the fact that, you know, this particular form I've created may not be useful to you. It's more about how to create the form. So for example, if I, I got some data, if I double click on a particular row of the data, the form tells me the country that I clicked on was Mexico and Mexico is part of South America. It's pulled that particular data from that row. I click close and then I can double click on Ethiopia and it tells me that Ethiopia is in Africa. Click close again and I guess one more time, double click on Malta and it's in Europe. So this particular form has a few basic aspects to it. It's given you a caption, it's got a text, it's got two text boxes and it's got a close button and it also has set the color of the form. And in addition to that, we're gonna cover setting the size of the form. So we're gonna close the form now, and let's get into the VBA that goes with it and the design of the form. So step one is you're going to insert a user form, and let's just move that up to the top left corner. Now you can resize the form by dragging the lower right hand corner and you can get any particular size you want. You've got drag a drag area at the bottom of the form and you've got a drag area at the right of the form. But what we're going to do is we're going to be intentional about this and we're going to actually type in the values because what we want to do is we want to be precise with how the form looks. Now when you look at a particular form because we've got user form 2 selected you've got the properties windows which shows you a whole load of items you can set which can be a bit intimidating but really there's only about four or five items that you need to pay attention to at least when you're getting started or most of the time when you're putting forms together and to illustrate this point i've got a little crib sheet to help me knock this video out relatively quickly and i have it here in notepad and so I'll just display it to you. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be adding a user form. I'm going to be adding a country text box. I'm going to add a region text box and I'm going to add a close button. And I'm going to set the, what I would say is the important properties from this crib sheet. So right now I'm going to click on the user form and I'm going to set the width of the user form to 285. And I'm going to set the height of the user form here we go, and that's going to be 100, or whatever VBA accepts as being close to that value, the back color. Now we can set the color of the form by choosing the back color property. You click the drop down, you've got a number of uh, options displayed to you here. And um, you've got, so you've got the system tab, you've also got the palette, and you can get go for some really outlandish colors to annoy your coworkers and say, hey, you know, I've just started programming and I can go for some really gaudy colors. But in addition to that, you can type in the color values. And what I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna choose a color and copy it into that value. And I'll paste it, and there we go. That's the color in the demo I gave you. So that's the back color set. Now we're gonna set the caption. So if you go to caption, um, you can type anything you want there, but right now for speed, I'm just going to type in the value I've already created. And I'm going to, oops, I'm just going to paste it, Control V, and there you go, businessprogrammer.com cell grabber. Also, in the code, when I'm calling it, I don't want to call it user form one. I want to, because you're going to have numerous forms and you want to give them sensible names. So um, for the actual demo, it's form grab row, and I'm just going to call this form grab row test. Because when we run the code again, I'm not going to write the code again, so I'm just going to go against form grab row. But just to demonstrate, we we'll put in form grab row test. And that's going to be the name of this particular form. 
The next step is to add the controls and I'm going to add the country text box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to view and I'm going to get the toolbox by clicking on the toolbox. Now I've done that, but you don't see the toolbox. What's going on? I've got multiple monitors and a problem with uh, Excel is it kind of does its own thing and puts stuff where it wants. And the toolbox for some reason has come up on my main monitor, even though Excel is over here. So let's just put the toolbox up here. Now that's something you may find that you, you can't seem to find where the toolbox is and quite often and especially if you're in banking environments or whatever where you've got loads of monitors it's it's up there or it's over there just look for it it is someplace okay so here's our toolbox uh, highlight the text box just drag any size text box onto your form again just like with the form all controls can be dragged via these little handles here but again i'm going to go to my crib sheet and i'm going to set its properties so i click on its name and i'm going to call it text country and I'm going to give it a left value of 6 and a height of 18. And its width will be 102. Okay, so that's text country created. Now you can create another, and again, my toolbox keeps going over here. Okay. So now I'm going to add another text box. So let's do that. You can do it this way and you can go through the trouble of resizing everything again. Or you can try this quick little tip. Instead of drawing a new text box, just copy your existing text box. Control C, Control V. I'm just going to leave it there. I'm going to now call this text box text region. Text region. And the advantage of copying it is some of the properties you've already set will be loaded into it. So you only have to change the ones that you don't want to be the properties that they are set to. So text region, I needed to change the name of it. I'm going to need to change the left position of it to 120. When I can find left again, 120. But I'm not going to have to change the height and I'm going to have to change the top value to what I've set up as being 12. And the advantage of this, of course, is you don't have to go resizing them, trying to get them at the right area. Because you've explicitly put in the height at a particular element, you know they're all level. And the width, of course, will be 144. Okay, so now we're going to put in the button to close it. So again, going to my toolbox, we get our command button. So when I can find my command button, where is it? There we go, command button. And I'm just going to draw a command button there again. And so its name is going to be command close, CMD, close. It's good to have uh, naming conventions like this, TXT, lowercase for text box, lowercase CMD for code, because when you're in the code editor and you use the IntelliSense, it makes things easier to find and also you know what kind of an object you're dealing with. Uh, if that went over your head, uh, it'll come to you later. Okay, so now let us style this command button. So we need to give it the name command close, which I've just done. We'll set its caption to close. And we will set its left value to 162. and we will set its top value to 42, which it's already at. Well done. And the height will be 20. And its width will be one or two. And there we go. Our uh, form is created. So we can test to see how this form looks by just by having the form in the main window, just press your play button. And there you go, businessprogrammer.com, cell grabber, and the form works. So now let's add the code to close the form. So we, what we do is we make sure we've got our form selected, go up to the view code window, click on view code, and then you get this window here. So now that we've clicked on the view code window, let's uh, put in the code. If you click the drop down here, 
you'll find our command close button. And this is why the naming conventions are, are useful because you can see our two text boxes are sorted together because they're, they're named text region and our command button is there. So imagine if you had 10, 15 text boxes, a load of list boxes, a few diff different command buttons. When you do a decent naming convention, it's easy to find them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click command close and these are known as events and what happens is in this instance I got the click event. You also have other options like it could, you could have the button only respond to a double click and enter an error. You've got a whole lot of stuff here which can be dealt with on other videos. But command click is what we want and all you want to type in here is unload me. Now I also, uh, most of the time when I'm doing forms, I use an object oriented paradigm. So this isn't the way I generally do it, but if you want to get a form working really quickly, this works. So command close, unload me. So let's uh, now just save that and close this and just test it. So we now click run the form, close, and it works, okay? So let's now cover how to launch the form from a button. I click on the spreadsheet, I make sure I've clicked on the developer tab and I go to the insert button and I can choose either form controls or ActiveX controls. I like, I tend to like the ActiveX controls so I'll go with that. So I'll click an ActiveX control and I will, like before, make a button. You can set your names here so like build command launch form and I will set a caption again the caption being launch form when you're putting a form on a spreadsheet okay sorry when you're putting a button on a spreadsheet especially if it's an active X button one thing that's very important to do is on this particular property here take focus on click set that to false otherwise it can mess up your macros because what's actually happening is if it's set to true which is the default for some reason the spreadsheet is no longer selected so if you're doing some work on the spreadsheet an error can occur because the code thinks hey i'm not on the spreadsheet so always set take focus and click to false. So now that I've done that, we now go to sheet data, which is the sheet that this button was on, and I get the code for it. And, well, I've already filled it out here. So, well, I haven't actually, sorry. So we get sheet data, we go to command launch form, and we have the click event. So now I will type, um, let's just do form grab row dot, form grab row dot show so now let's click the button first of all I've got to take the sheet out of design mode let's click the button and there we have the form close it launch it close it launch it close it okay so that's the form using an active X button you may be more familiar with using the form controls so let's do that as well. Insert form. Uh, there's our button. We draw a button on the form and we've got to get a macro for it. But I haven't created a macro for it. So let's do that now. Insert module and sub launch my form. And we call it form grab row dot show there we go so now i'm going to right click on this and assign macro launch my form okay and i'll give it a name by you've got to select the caption here when you're on a form control and i'll just type l a u n c h launch form uh form controls so we know what we're doing it from and you can tell you you can tell you're using a form because you get a little hand when the, uh, sorry form button you get a little hand when your cursor goes over it as opposed to an arrow on an active X so let's try that 
and you've got your form, okay? The other element I need to show you is how I got information into the form. So on the form grab row, let's just look at the code again. I basically created a property let routine where I said me.textCountryName equals vData1 and me.textCountryName equals vData0. So basically that could be anything. That could just be a string uh, with last name, first name, any particular piece of information you want to put in. You can set it in. You, can, you could put a string variable. So for example, I could say public property let uh, AAA. The reason I use AAA under course, under score, is because when you press the IntelliSense, these ones will sort to the top and you'll be able to see your own custom properties quite easy. So let's say AAA region, if I could get my cursor to work, Bival region as string okay and so then I'll go me dot txt hey region I can do that value equals region notice that I didn't do that value there that's because that value is the default property of it so now let's just uh, test this from the launch control launch form control so if i go to my macro and i will do form grab row dot aaa region equals some region and you'll see it will get populated so let's just try it some region okay so I think that should be useful. Also, if you want to find the details on the code that enabled you to do the double click, such as, let's just choose Malta, that is in this spreadsheet, which you can download on the link that's showing up here. It'll be businessprogrammer.com go some number. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. You can get the code that goes with this at businessprogrammer.com forward slash go forward slash 108, which will take you to the article that goes with this and have a look around the site. You may find some other interesting articles. Bye for now.